we're talking about about timing. We're 25 minutes ahead of ourselves. Wow. Um, one of the one of the things that our trainer in the World Cafe said to us when she came down from Columbus is, "Don't rush." And that sounded lovely, but impossible. <laughs> Completely impossible, because so much of this work is not having enough time to do everything we need to do. Mm -hmm. But we're 25 minutes ahead of the so let's enjoy the not rushing tonight. So we want to talk about the challenges of the World Cafe, what, what sort of happened, and, and how, how we managed it, because I think it's, there's some good lessons. Um, and then um, what some of the concerns that some of you expressed to me about it, to surface those, because it's still a little bit there. Some of the accomplishments of that World Cafe, um, and, then, and then sharing with you some of that process and some of the content as um, a window a little bit on, on how we might explore including the public at everything that happens going forward in ways that are, are very generative and I think very constructive. Um, so first in terms of the challenges. So, so what happened was I was in touch with Diane. She said, we're having our board meeting. I said, great, um, would you like to think about supporting the board in its next listening session. And they said, we'd love to, don't know what that means. And so I went and I said, so the next board meeting is in two weeks, the next listening session, and um, there's this person in Columbus who trains folks in how to do this thing called World Cafe. So they got very excited about it, both in terms of a methodology for them as a sort of a community servant, and then specifically around saying, okay, so we're going to train people quickly and then potentially be able to use what they've trained to support the schools in this, in this important and challenging time. And then I left. <laughs> then I went on my vacation for a week, which, which was a joke, which is, okay, you gave this to us and then you left us, but actually it was kind of the point, which is this is yours. You know, you, this is what you guys do, and if you can prepare yourselves and you want to, that'll be great. So, but then I got back on Monday morning at 5 a.m. because our plane was late and was told that at 9.30 there was a meeting because everything had to change. Um, that the lawyer, as you all know, said that this meeting can't happen as it's happening. So I came to that meeting and then Terry and I met with, the, with Diane and the other folks from the World Cafe, from the Village Mediation to say everything has to change. So, um, I went to their training that night. This is Monday before the meeting on Wednesday. And they were still working on the idea of a program in which they were going to um, basically follow having the, the, the architect present and then break into groups to talk about the eight options. But they really got, were confused. So the next morning they called a meeting and said, what should we do? Shall we cancel? Shall we keep doing what we're trying to do? And then Len said, or actually, I forget if Len or, or Sarah said, this was Len, Sarah, and Diane. They're sort of the, Diane's the professional of this mediation, and Len and Sarah are kind of the main volunteers. They said, well, maybe this can be an opportunity. And if you know mediators, that's what we do. Right? When you get a lemon, you try to figure out what its lemonade is. They said, so the opportunity is, we as a mediation center are really committed to a community process and, and conversation. This is no longer a school board meeting, so let's make it our meeting. So, so that's what they decided on Tuesday. And they reach, they changed the focus, and then wrote a letter to the, to the table host to say this is going to be different. And seven of them said, we don't want to do this. And then, and then they kept going through a process, and then Wednesday morning they met again to say, should we cancel? And, and what they decided was, if we cancel, we will fail. If we go forward, we might fail, but we might succeed. So we're going to go forward. And, and so in, those, in that setting, they went forward. And um, the way that we reframed it, and this was largely my input, was to say, if you're not going to focus on the eight options, then what can be the substantive focus of this that's relevant? And sort of the questions below the question that the underlying issues here are people's deep held commitments to a set of values. Um, and the values that um, 
Well, you'll see in a minute. Let's hold this for a second. Because the first exercise we did before we got to the values that we then had them explore was what does it mean to be connected to Yellow Springs? Why are you here at this meeting? Why do you care about Yellow Springs so much that you want this to succeed? This school process, this, this um, facilities process that we are not talking about directly, but is actually very much what this is all about. So why don't you introduce them to the data, and then we'll come back to the conversation about what, what did we ground this in at the deeper level. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think it's just interesting that we're doing this mix because we heard in your stories um, some of those things that are related to what you might what you might think is unique about Yellow Springs or how it stands out in maybe comparison to other places. Um, so you'll see on the back door there, there's a couple of flip charts, and we're just going to invite you to come and gather around them and just take a look at the data that's there. So. So these, these two are what we value about Yellow Springs. Um, and basically people were sitting at their table groups talking about it and then they kind of came up with a summary for each group. Um, so you can see some of the things that they said. And then this one is about when there's a conflictual situation, what enables us to create success through that conflict. And these are ideas that people had. Um, individual ideas and posters that were then grouped together into themes. So just here explain that. Maybe explain the table system. How how they oh, okay. how they were managed and. Yeah. So I mean, there were tables set up. Five people at a table. Each had a table host. And so what would happen is um, five people would start at one table for the first question, which is what we value about Yellow Springs. They would talk there. Um, we would harvest from each table at the end of, of the discussion, so sharing as a, as a bigger group kind of a summary of what, what happened at each table, and then we would switch. So it would be the second question, and then people would move to a different table, but not, not as a group, so you would just kind of go to whichever table you wanted to. And the idea is like you're sort of taking part of what you heard and part of what was discussed into a different conversation, to a different table, um, and getting to sit with different people. And so this was the second question where people, when people were at, were at a second table discussing that, um, people wrote their, their thought, their idea about what, what conditions were required for success in, in a situation of so the So this is kind of afterwards. It, the, it, yeah. the, big, the big one word summary. Exactly. So yeah. then uh, the facilitator collected all the post-its. And then uh, a couple of them, they grouped a couple of the facilitators, they grouped them according to the theme. Were these conditions for success specific to challenges in Yellow Springs and as a part of community, or they're just abstract, like in any challenge? So it's, it's, it's kind of abstract, but what in the tables they asked uh, people to share a story. So to share a story of a time that, that you uh, witnessed or experienced success in a situation of conflict, and then other people were kind of uh, reflecting back what they heard, and then together you'd come up with a word that, that represented that, and that's how those words were created. So it didn't have to be Yellow Springs, but it was something concrete that somebody had either seen or experienced. Yes. May I ask one other yes, question? Yes, please. Sorry. When you did the introduction, Jay, about the process, I was just curious because you know, we weren't there and I wasn't a part of that. Um, you mentioned that there were um, some facilitators, I think you said seven for the tables that decided not to participate at a certain point. Did you find last, did they find last minute replacements or was there enough to kind of go around? In the end we had, I think, between 50 and 60 people and there was enough facilitators for everybody. We, we had initially hoped for between 100 and 150, but in, I think part of the job of the, of the facilitator was actually supposed to be recruiting. Okay. Um, but I think in the confusion of everything and the ambiguous dynamic, we sort of lost that steam. Okay. And so when you, said, with the, oh, seven. when you said <laughs> seven uh, decided not to participate, out of many? Uh, out of, so there were 27 altogether, and so 20 okay. facilitators showed up. So okay. four. Mm -hmm. Or 18, I think, in the end. So maybe there were 25 that had, had been mm -hmm. trained. Okay. And, and I think maybe one thing we should say, we didn't really say, is like the idea of the world cafe, that it's a setting like a cafe. You know, we, we sit and we, we talk in small groups, we have these conversations, and that we can engage with things in a different way than if like we're in a stadium full of people or you know, at a more formal kind of setting. So it's a way to 
to have people engage in a way that maybe feels more, more natural and more inviting. So why don't you look at this, and then if you have any comments or questions, when we sit back down, we'll, we'll explore those. And then we'll move into the next one. Cafe is a system that's used everywhere, but the person who brought it is a woman named Mary Alice, a uh, trainer who mm -hmm. travels everywhere and prays for them. Okay, where should they stand? What? Yeah. But she's not there much. She's in Berlin right now. Oh, yeah. Well, mm, work is easy. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Dinner, but this will oh, not be as good. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone understands. Sorry about good, that. As we've seen, good to get the communication out there I mean, so that everyone's every single we're all good together. <laughs> so. It's still like rapidly, well, we still don't have final guidance from mm -hmm. the auditor or state. And so that's, and that's drawn out a lot of this. This is one of those things where it's, I mean, how do you move? So right. that people can appreciate it. Right. Right. So speaking of obstacles and, and dynamics that we have to address, so Terry said she wants to talk about how this meeting was changed like it was. And right. I mean, I, I feel like this is the elephant in the room, and I want to explain it. And um, you know, it's my responsibility as superintendent to give the board the best guidance I have, um, which is what I've been doing. And so, right now, you know, with the auditor of state, <laughs> I've given you all the guidance that I have. Um, and, and so I clear something up that TJ mentioned to me, and, and when I've been talking about this guidance, I've been saying House Bill 140, probably because at Capitol That's Conference, I was in a session with Becky that was titled House Bill 140 when they talked about this. House Bill 140 is actually ballot language, which is, is law. I mean, that's a, that is what it is. But connected to this presentation is the Ohio Revised Code about what, not just school districts, but municipalities, um, the laws that we have to follow, the right, township, um, when there's a uh, bond issue or nothing in the ballot. It's been around for a long time. The auditor of state is a political position. As, as things change, that position changes. How they look at one thing may be different in one year than in, in another. Um, the auditor of state has been looking very closely at what uh, school districts and uh, other other organizations, um, what they do during levies and bond issues. We know a, a neighboring district in Greene County, um, both board members and the superintendent were brought up on criminal charges for things they did um, related to this revised code. Mm. Particularly spending money. I I do not. I'm not. I'm not going to get into the details because I have very strong opinions about it. Um, but I do know enough to know that it is something I don't want to go through myself and will not go through myself. Nor do I want this to happen to any board member because I think we are all doing this um, for the best intentions of the school community and the larger middle schools community. So the guidance we've been given is that. <coughs> We can't do things now 
that many districts, I'm going to say almost all districts, have done in the past. Very simple exercises like, here are our plans, let's put red dots on the ones that we like. Um, <clears throat> let's narrow. So the board and the superintendent and the treasurer cannot do what the auditor of state calls, my term, leading, leading the community to one thing or another. Um, I think, you know, the general question is, well, how do districts find out whether the community supports something? And the answer is, well, you'll know when people vote it down. They're like, that's kind of ridiculous, but okay, it is what it is. Um, at our first listening session, we did I likes and I wonders. No real reading. Um, and, and, and I did that. You know, and I know there were some questions from you, so I appreciate you giving me the freedom to allow that to happen. Because it was a way we could get community input without asking them to rank order options. I like this, I wonder this, you know? Um, and, and, and it was for people to say it for every every option. Um, we have that data. I've spent a long time looking at that. So fast forward to additional guidance from the auditor. I happened to be at a conference and saw our legal counsel. She's like, Terry, you're not going to like this. So I talked to her and, and I, it was literally the week before the listening session and I explained in detail what we had planned. My presenting, my, our architect presenting, uh, community going around, and at that point I think it was even with village mediation going around and talking about each plan. She's like, please do not do that. But presenting with numbers. Presenting with which numbers. Which was different than correct. the first. Correct. Which I just was different to from the first. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That, that is correct. Mm -hmm. She said, you, you have two options. One is that the board can have the architect present and then the community can come up and speak one at a time and the board can listen, and that's it. Two is that village mediation can run the show without us present, because they can do whatever they want. And so if they want to say, which of these um, options do you like, great, they can. We, we're not paying them. We, you know, this is a community effort that we happen to just be able to, to use anything they, they get. I understand village mediation's reluctance because when you don't understand it, you know, it would be hard to sit at a table to talk about it. So when it was told to me in a conversation with Jay, when Jay said, hey, here's what they're going to do, was it our preference? No. But I talked to TJ, called him, and I said, look, this is not what we designed. But we all know, and it, and it was confirmed again, I spent a lot of time today looking at the data from our first listening sh session. What that confirmed to me was that there are a lot of big community things, issues, that whether we like it or not, impact school issues. And so if this is an opportunity for the com community to start getting at that, great. Maybe then that will help us, even though it's not about plans and it's not about numbers, and that's how that came to be. Was not um, designed by me to be that way, but in the end, I had to make a decision based upon um, guidance from our legal counsel um, that I felt would protect myself, protect the treasurer, and protect all five of you as well as the school district. I, I think we all can say that there's some serious issues with the way the auditor is approaching this because we have to be able to engage with our community. But in the end, this is where we are right now. And, and so I just wanted to say, if, if you know, I'm the responsible party, but I want you to understand I, I don't regret what I did. I have to make decisions for the, the best interest of the district and, and this board, um, and that is what I did. Well, I'll say you didn't make that decision in a bubble. We, we talked. Correct. Right? And so, and you had my full support, or I made the decision, I mean, however you want to say it. Um, but we also promised, you know, and I promised from the beginning, we were going to do these listening sessions different on each of them anyway, right? And so I think this listening session, well, not what we had originally anticipated, 
was different. And there were different people there. And I had been asked for two very specific requests from a couple people. One was, you know, is there a way to talk when the board is not there? Because I guess we are super intimidating. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, so that was one request. And the second was to have mediators present. And this was months and months ago. You know, and I kind of balked at that. Like, I don't think we're there. Um, but so both of those things happen, right? So that, you know, in some ways, I think that there is a, you know, we listened, we heard, we tried something different for you at this time. Now, what we do for April 5th is a discussion that I'd like to have, not tonight, but we, that's... We will have it tomorrow a little bit, in terms okay. of the process. Right. right. Perfect. And then, um, you know, we can kind of nail it down. And we've still got a TVD at the end of April, or the, no, uh, next week's work session, right? And we have a date and then time set for that. And so that's on the tentative agenda of things we're going to talk about, like, how do we want to see April 5th go? Right. We'll talk about both of those tomorrow. Okay. The 29th and the 5th. So more more comments or concerns? Yeah, I uh, just so snack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just Judith. Um, I understand how that decision got made. Mm -hmm. um, I would ask in the future on something as important as this that the we have an emergency school board meeting so that we can talk to our lawyer, so we can ask questions of her. Um, I did talk to her. I did ask to speak to her. I did ask her to put something in writing to explain um, because what happened at Bellbrook is very different and it was they spent public monies that there's a pretty clear you know revised code rule against that um, but I would ask that because this is such an important issue we are coming down the pike as we all know and we kind of lost a meeting there which I felt maybe we would have decided as a school board if we had an opportunity to do something slightly different. And the other thing I want to say is TJ had mentioned to me, Terry, that you had suggested this idea of Mike giving the presentation and then a microphone up there or, you know, and I liked the, I thought it worked very well, the I like and I wonder. I thought that worked great. Um, so that you could have some of that happening as well maybe. But um, it reminds me you know, so no particular questions, people can just talk to you. It reminded me of when... You talked about the 5th of April, the next listening session? Yes. Okay. yes. Um, when I was on Village Council, we had this very upsetting incident on New Year's Eve uh, with the police department. And so um, the town was kind of in an uproar about it. And uh, there was, basically, it was a listening session. I don't think we called it that. But anyway, um, the council was there, the staff, you know, administrative staff. In the front, and we were in the gym at the Bryan Center, and it was packed. I mean, it was standing room only. Mm -hmm. And basically, you know, there was some information, some information shared at the beginning, and then there were two microphones up there, and the uh, village mediation. You know, there were time frames, and a ton of people got up and spoke to us, and we listened. And I would, I thought, and a lot of people afterwards said they, how much they appreciated the opportunity. Um, for, to be able to talk to their elected representatives. So I would like to see, I would like to see that kind of thing. I, I don't particularly want a process that gets in between us and those people that we represent. So, so I just wanted to put that out there. Um, that, that, um, I understand how it happened in the past though, and I don't know that it will happen in the future. If something like this is this kind of important, I would ask that we consider an emergency meeting. I was away. I would have been on the phone and just listen in or whatever. But I, I think um, uh, getting those two communications about the meeting first to change this way, then <laughs> change that way, and I was on vacation. And uh, it, uh, it disturbed my vacation, needless to say. I'm sure it disturbed other people as well who weren't on vacation. But, uh, Anyway, I just think that would have uh, been a better uh, way for us to all have an opportunity to think about what maybe was the best thing to do. But, I mean, what happened was fine, but I think it would have been better. And in the future, I'd like to see it. Let's consider that. Doing and, that. And, and great. That's very helpful. And I think we have to keep thinking about this in the next day, which is what do we do going forward so that the things that we've run up against and that's problematic important. So emergency meetings and so forth. So the staff, I think, was Amy, Louisa, oh, Jay. No, sorry, Dorothy. Amy, Dorothy, Jay. So there, 
you know, I appreciate that this came down and had to be addressed. Um, there was a lot of open, especially from my point of view, we vo you voice this um, in the communications that we had about how you two made the, how the group made the decision. So there, one, there's a group that made the decision, but it wasn't the board. Is one part of the problem that I see. There was, um, there were two information sheets that were out and available to the public about the eight options. One that was featured in the paper on Thursday, and then um, the one that was posted. Is it when? Wednesday, Thursday, on the school board, on, you know, the school website, on facilities, and those were not the same. And there was nobody around to explain those differences. Um, and we had a discussion, um, uh, the superintendent and the treasurer and I, uh, that week, so that we could go and dive down into why there were wide, there was a wide range of. Um, of square footage on the options that were that were and and you know in some discussions about how that might you know how that might lead to discussions in the community. So and I appreciate the time that both Jay and Terry took with me last week, but there was I had some expectation about being part of a conversation last week as part of our third listening sessions and I'm even hearing today because it's been an open question for me are we going to have two more listening sessions or just one we have one scheduled and we can talk about it yeah so that, that's so it's good to hear that that's still an open question there's we're working through a process and we've lost we lost a week and uh, I would like to get to a little farther down the road to those discussions because um, and so I feel like I've been blocked from having those discussions with the board with the administration and um, they're important and I think we've got options in front of us that we haven't gotten a chance to discuss as a board so that's my frustration is that we is that this was a disruption and I appreciate that it needed to be reacted to quickly, but one I would have appreciated if the board could have had, as a collective, could have gathered to have that discussion. So I think you're, you're talking, I feel like I have to respond to this, so I think you're talking about multiple things. Yeah, well, there was the a lot listening of session is a <laughs> listening session, okay? The, the discussions that the board needs to have about the options, quite honestly, I've been advocating for. I've been advocating for a work session that the board has where the public can be present, but the board needs at least one, maybe two, work sessions where you do not entertain comments from the public. Because if every meeting is that, there's no time for the board itself to engage in right. discussion. So there's a lot of uncertainty and, and so about then, how that's and, going to I'm just yeah. I'm just saying yeah. at certain meetings you can do certain things and at other meetings you can't. At this, at a listening session, Amy, if you start engaging like this, that's the end of it. You cannot mm -hmm. engage at a listening session when we have presented plans that have money attached. That's what I've been trying to say. In the end I can only can give we talk the, about square footage? I can only give the board guidance. You are all professional adults. You are going to make your decisions. But I don't you know, I, I understand that you wanted an emergency meeting at, at some point at superintendent as superintendent, you either trust me to lead the district and do the work or you don't. Well I did what I was required to do. I contacted the board president and said, here's the dilemma we have. It is, was it my preference that it work out that way? No. But in the end, that's where we were. But there's and, still and I will respect your decision, but I want you to, I just need to know, do you want me to do my work as superintendent, 
Or do you not want me to do my work as superintendent? Well, there's, but, but there's also a process of recovering from this. Again, is that the board put a letter to the editor in the paper that we signed collectively, inviting the public to four listening sessions. And I still have an opening open question about what happens with the last two. Are we down to only one now, or are we down to two? I mean, there's a recovery process that, there's the decision, and I understand that it had to be made quickly, but then there's also the recovery to that, and we haven't gotten to that yet. Okay, we will. Tomorrow we'll talk about it. I end up with this a long time. We got a short Next, we, have two more people that we have two more people that we need to talk, and then we'll... Let's right. Back. I mean, just understand my frustration for the past week. Got it. I think everybody's sharing it, and it's useful to air it. It is. And, and in terms of what are we going to do with these listening sessions, yes, we have to talk about that tomorrow. Because that's part of your timeline. Right? You're going to look at your timeline from now until May 23rd and say, what are we planning to do? What's missing? What can we do? How do we do it? What's the processes that we use? So that's very much on the agenda. And, and I hear two different mm -hmm. things that, that, that are being said here. And they're, they're related and they're important. The first one is when we have an emergency like this, what's our procedure for getting us together and having a deliberation about it? That's one. And then when we have moved ahead and lost something, how do we recover it? Right. So those are, let's let the others talk. Well, but just let me just say is that I feel like the discussion that I feel needs to be made, and people are asking me, what's the answer to these mm -hmm. questions? is that I feel like I can't talk about those. And I feel like they really need to be talked about immediately. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise people are like going, well, I wish I heard that a month ago or two months ago. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I really have an idea that I think will work. And I haven't gotten a chance to talk with a lot of people about it here. And I feel like. And so I'm, I'm eager to get to this. Well, so that's part of my frustration, is that I'm eager to get to a point that we're still far away from. Okay, so just to, just to, to tell you, tomorrow we will talk about when and how you're going to do that. We're not going to talk about the content of it, but yes, indeed. And, and, and there's a proposal that yeah. next Wednesday at 6 o'clock you'll be doing that. Yeah. And Terry's now saying she thinks she ought to add another one. So it's, it's coming. It's well, coming. And that's and on I, that schedule, which I've sent out several times and not gotten any feedback for. What? No, we've talked. I have not gotten any feedback over the schedule that I sent out several times. It was, so I assumed that everybody was okay. By, by hearing nothing back, I go, great, I'm not getting anything that needs to change. That's all well, I'm saying. But, 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 you know, you, but we I will talk about that case, tomorrow. Everything the is on the table. that I have, that I have conflicts with, you know, in response to it. Your conflicts keep changing. And, no, and I, yeah. when I understand what... It's hard um, getting a, a group of seven, essentially, that we definitely need, and then more with the principals together. Well, yeah, and that's, I've that's engaged in work that, Okay, you know, so this is on our agenda. Like we are definitely going to be tackling <laughs> these questions of when yeah. do we do the yeah. things that need to be done, how do we prioritize them, how do we commit to the time and energy that we need to find things. Absolutely. Yeah, it has yeah. to be done. Dorothy. Uh, the moment has passed for now, but two things. Mm -hmm. One of them is you talked about requests that were made public community about the next month. Uh, I think there's another one about providing child care so that parents could come. Um, I don't know if I could get it to that. Okay. We're working on it. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure that it was out there is that it parents say we want to participate, but it is child care is an issue. Uh, and then the other one that I better get I guess do you have a question about how tears and like children are invited. invited. What's, what's that research? I would welcome them to bring the children. Okay. Um, and then the, the other one was the importance that I understood and I want to make sure that we're all on the same page because I want to make sure we're sharing this reality. Is that when there is a presentation of plans with numbers, we cannot as a board have a discussion of those. Is that what I'm understanding at the listening sessions? Yeah. Okay, can I add some clarification about... There's lots of confusion still, for sure. Yeah. Wait, here's, again, Nicole will come and speak again. Yeah. Here's my understanding. We have to be very careful when we attach numbers to plans. Particularly when we have the public there and we are engaging with them. 
let's say we're at a work session mm -hmm. and the board has to discuss plans. There is no way you can discuss plans and what to potentially put on the ballot without talking about numbers. Mm -hmm. That is a board discussion that you have to have. Mm -hmm. um, I think the danger comes in when plans are presented with cost attached and the board then starts to have a discussion, well, I think this plan is best. Or I think this plan is best and I, and I feel like we should go this way and, and, and then you're back and forth with the community. Again, I am happy to call Nicole again, you know, if I say, Nicole, I need you to come out here and have a meeting with the board again, she will do so. Again, you, you have to understand, we hire attorneys to make sure we are following the law. It is their job to provide conservative opinions. And she will tell you that. She will say, Terry, you are paying me to protect the district and provide you with the most conservative legal opinion I can. I get that. But what she will also say is, you can pay me, <laughs> always, but you can take my opinion or not. I just know enough from Bellbrook and those I know there. I do not want that for myself and, and I think um, I, I do not want that for myself, nor do I want it for any of you, nor do I want the district to be put in that position because, quite honestly, we have lots of other work to do. Yes. So, I, I don't know what else to say <laughs> except I'm happy to call Nicole and have her come back, um, or Becky. I mean, we heard both Becky and Nicole talk about it. Um, and, and there's a difference between um, statements that have given opinion and questions that have been asked fact and that we can do we, we can have a responsibility facts. to provide factual information to the community and verifiable facts I Correct. think very yeah, first we Jay and then Louisa yeah. so yes. let's, let's go a little some more Jay um yeah so we listening to all of these um we have an opportunity for the public to speak at every regular board meeting and um we also have policy to allow as most people as possible to speak during that time and policy to restrict that time to allow for us to continue our meeting in a timely manner. Um, and we've expanded the sections where the public speaks in too. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and, and um, so we will, we will get there. <laughs> the, um, and, and the president can, during community comments, can allow people more time or allow more time for community comments mm -hmm. if, if the president so chooses. Um, I don't believe there was any emergency. No classroom was flooded, no property was damaged, um, no one was hurt. There was nothing to vote on. Um, to me, an emergency situation is when the board needs to meet, to vote on something to be done. And it typically involves having to approve an amount of money that I cannot approve by myself um, or a very serious situation in regarding student or staff welfare or conduct. Uh, so scheduling meetings is not an emergency, not to me. Now you can always communicate amongst each other to plan and schedule meetings. And that includes canceling and rescheduling meetings, removing meetings. That is not, that is okay under sunshine. The five of you, and including Terry and I, so that we know when and where to be, um, are welcome to communicate about the schedule of meetings. Um, and then I, I'm going to urge all board members to please, please, please reread because we've all read them all board policy 0123 that is a code of ethics for board members i advise you all to reread that policy and to take it very seriously um, now one of the things that we have been advised this is part of the do not engage do not 
um, is you can't talk about options. And you can't talk about them with money. And it, board members are allowed to express their opinions when you work together. Now, the, the back and forth with the public is where it gets. But, you know, when we meet and we discuss, we are allowed to deliberate and express opinions, and we place our vote and we accept the majority rule. Three to two, four to one, five to zero, oh, whatever it is, whatever side you're on, you accept the majority rule. You can express your opinion up to that, but once it is ruled on, it goes back to the code of ethics. You will support the decision of the majority full heartedly. Um, so, soliciting feedback is where we really have to be careful. Um, and, and I would recommend that we just keep to the community comments. Unfortunately, that means that the community has to decipher what they want to comment on themselves. I have found places where they, you leave community comments in certain sections, but I would advise that we keep community comments where it is. and. Um, a lot of times, and I, I believe we do have policy that speaks to this, community comments are supposed to be about items on the agenda. Um, so you can request people if they have a non-agenda. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in here for a second. We're getting into procedures, and it's late, and we're going to do it tomorrow. Okay. So let's let's get back to the, the World Cafe listening session. We need that is the World Cafe session. I want to share one more bit of data that we've promised them that we would, and that they said to us, and was said actually from the podium. If in making the school board the school's decisions, they don't take this sort of input seriously, they're missing what at least we 60 people think is passionately important for you. So I think I think it'll be important to hear it. So I'd like to get to it. Um, so no more comments about procedures tonight. We will have five hours tomorrow, which will be almost all about procedures. So anything else about the difficulty that we had? The Recommendations you might suggest? Sure, and I can keep my comment to under a minute. Okay. I just want to say that I perceive many of us, and I will just speak for myself, to have frustrations about these laws coming from the state of Ohio and the Attorney General. And I just encourage all of us, including when we speak to community members, to try not to transfer our frustrations onto individuals or even to us as a collective board. We are working in an incredibly mm -hmm. difficult environment for public education officials in this state. Mm -hmm. And what I hear over and over again is frustration that actually I think goes back to the climate mm -hmm. of what we're working in within this state and it's not as much about a decision that was made by anybody here as individuals or as a board. I just want to remind us of that because I think even our community members could be reminded that we are also frustrated by the political climate in which we are working, at least I am, I'll speak for myself. Right. And that's, it's not our faults. It's not, right. there's nobody that we can actually even blame here in this room. Right. Um, so I just wanted to that's say fair. that. That's fair, okay, great. So, so what they ended up focusing on in their conversation, this was all preparation, an important preparation for building a sense of, now, what are the issues beneath the issues? So, so in the first month, that I was doing this commission for the, for the foundation, as you all remember, I was talking with you not about solutions, but how do you define the issues? What's going on here? And I talked with you, I talked to other community groups, and what came very clear to me were at least four sets of values. Let's, let's show them. And, and our trainer turned this into an exercise. And the values that, that came up over and over, whether they're worded exactly correctly or not, is not exactly the point. And in fact, we had some challenge with that. Okay. So let, let, let that one, where's that, that one on the right, right? Is that? Yep. The one on the right is the box. All, far right. Oh, the, the yeah. empty box. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so what we said are the issues beneath the issues, and again, whether they're worded right exactly, they, they capture core values that are going on in this community around the question of facilities. So ecology, in this case, sort of the controversy or the, the dialectic about is ecology best served by 
a new building with new windows, or is ecology best served by renewing and remodeling buildings that they can be brought up to speed? And that, but that, that a lot of people have that deep value of ecology, one way or the other, however it's defined. I suppose that's a, a guest who wants to watch, so they're allowed to invite um, Another issue, another value, an underlying value that seems to be important to many, many people in town is affordability. And included in that, of course, is diversity and inclusion. Hi. Then the question of green space, right? What's, what's going to happen to the Mills Lawn space? And then, and then schools, and the, and the place, place where we went back and forth, and if you look at the material, it said school environment at one, one of the pages, and the other one said schools. But these were the four values that they were then having a dialogue about. And the way they had the dialogue is to say, look at these four sets of values and place yourself on the continuum. Place yourself closest to the one that for you is most important to be addressed as we think about going forward around facilities, right? So, so that was framed in that way. And then they were given two sets of dots, actually three sets of dots, to put themselves on the continuum of where they were. So yellow is where they started. So these, these people said we're close to affordability, that's where closest. These two people said we're closer to schools. This person put themselves between schools and a college. Let's look at another one. These two put themselves at affordability. This person put them close to schools. This person put them a little closer to a college. Kept, keep going. So it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. But then, then they did a very interesting exercise. And they said, now, as mediators, part of what we're interested in is people taking other people's perspectives. And then once they take other people's perspectives, what does it do to their own? Does it broaden them? Does it change them? So they said, now, pick a spot that's not yours. So if, you're, if you put yourself at schools, Talk about the value of affordability. Not that you're against it, but at this point you prioritize schools. So now say why you would prioritize affordability. And they had that discussion. And they said, now take another dot, take a blue one, and put yourself where you are now. Having, having heard everybody else's reason for putting themselves in these places, and then having put yourself in one of these other places, do your, do your preferences or your values change? And almost everybody's did. Right? These people started here, and they moved here. They moved towards the middle. Interesting. These people, they did something on their own. Um, these folks started here, and they moved towards the middle. These folks, so it's very interesting what happened. But really what happened was deep listening. Deep listening and deep concern that, yes, we all have these deep values, and they're all important to us. And if we don't figure out a way that all of these values are surfaced, are legitimized, are dignified, then we're never going to make any progress. If we at least listen to each other, that underneath our arguments we have very deep commitments. And we dignify each other's commitments, even if they're not our own. So that's the biggest value that I think that came out of there. And the message to you all, which is just make sure we pay attention to the values underneath the discussion, because they might be what's really driving the passion. And it doesn't have to be oppositional. Right? They, they modeled so beautifully that people coming from different places could hear each other, could have a really meaningful conversation. I think everybody left saying this was meaningful. Now, folks said, I'm not sure what exact its relevance is to everything we're doing. But then, then the, 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 I think it was Len who said this. He said, the relevance is the board has to pay attention to these underlying values because that's the rhythm. That's sort of the, 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 the passion here that needs to be. So, yeah, any comments or questions about that? And, and we'll leave this up so as we wrap up tonight, you can just look at it. It's a very interesting dynamic. I'm just observing, because I am a visual person, I'm just observing from what I see is a lot in the, a lot of them have affordability and schools dots. I don't see as much dynamics in those other two squares of ecology and green space. It's true. I saw that too. And and one of the things that I think we have to be very careful about with listening sessions are people who show up are somewhat self-selecting. Mm -hmm. And the people who showed up to this were invited by mediators. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I don't know how they got there, actually. They, invited by, I don't know, they, they were supposed to be invited by mediators. In the end, I'm not sure the mediators did that. Mm -hmm. uh, they were supposed to go out and bring two people each. 
So 25 mediators would have brought at least 50 people, but I don't think that happened. But, but same thing at the listening sessions. The folks who are giving you input have a particular perspective. And how are we going to get perspective from the 2,000 voters? We'll talk about that tomorrow, too. Um, um, it was a public meeting, and I think it's, it's not unfair to say. At the very end of the meeting, we went around, and we asked for one word. That seems to be a thing that we do. And everybody said positive words, hopeful, um, eager to move forward, optimistic, um, energized, feeling part of community. The only person who said, I'm not sure, was Michael Slaughter. <laughs> and I said to him after Michael, so I'm curious about... He's the engineer. Well, Michael's also representing the green space. And, and yes, this, this group didn't happen to emphasize green space very much. So, you know, I don't know why he said that, and I'm going to talk with him about it. Um, so, but what we have to try to avoid going forward is getting folks into camps and having the green space folks, 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 green space folks say, wait, we were not considered enough here. That wasn't a good process for us. So, right, what would be good for you? What do we have to do to make sure that you feel you're part of this process too? I was, I was going to ask also about the ecology word, because I can see how it can be understood in two, two different ways. One way would be we need to keep what we have and renovate it, and the other way says, well, if we ever want to stay, steer away from fossil fuel, we can't retrofit that in existing buildings. Right. And so I am worried that we can't read much into whatever data is attached to that, or the absence of data, what is attached to that, because the word was not self-descriptive. Well, Len did define them as, as they were thinking about it, but at the table they were defined. Your husband exactly defined that in those two ways, and, and then said, and I now am emphasizing that in this way. And I was going to ask you the next thing, is who was defining the, the terms, and I think you said the facilitators, and yeah. I think that you and I, we've had a fun conversation about it, is that you had, what is it you call? Multi, uh, multi, multi biased, uh, uh, multi biased uh, facilitators. No. Multi. Um, instead of neutral, we have multi partial. Multi partial. <laughs> that means that, of course, it makes me look at the data and say, well, who got to define yeah. the terms and how did that influence the data? Well, except for the terms, the, the terms were defined by Len in front of the, the whole room once. And then they sat down at the tables and they said, where do you put yourself and why do you put yourself? So then the participants define it themselves. This data is not in any way um, representative data. This yeah. is, this is, a, this is a, a group of 50 people who had a passionate conversation about things that mattered to them. Mm -hmm. and, and taking seriously these sets of values and that it's possible to talk about all of them as underlying what you guys are doing, I think is the main point. Mm -hmm. And I was also say that um, you know, where, you know, when you're talking about ecology and green space, is that that tension between those two ideals may have caused it, that neutrality. So, in other words, you have, you know, you know, there's, this is where, you know, people have to make a tough decision, and this is considered, so this is an easier decision than this, or maybe this doesn't cause as much suffering. Naturally, it doesn't, it's not as divisive. Right. So there's often, you know, there's, so if we talk about climate change, that tends to be a more device, divisive mm -hmm. conversation than, say, um, uh, Head Start, below that. So, but the, again, the bottom line of all of this was that the, uh, an environment was set up for deep listening, and people did. Even they came and said, you know, I'm committed to this, I'm committed to this, and then they said, and I'm hearing you say you're committed to this, and I hear that. And that's what happened. So it wasn't anyone saying, and I'm right and you're wrong. But right. we have all of these values that are contending, yeah. and we're respectfully listening to each other, and we're creating an environment where we can have a difficult conversation and start. Well, it's just, you know, I like vectors, there's some that, you know, there's this natural spread, and it's kind of like when you put things perpendicular to each other, right. you know, they're, they're, there's kind of like a natural spread in this direction versus a natural spread in that direction, and people align themselves. Right on what's considered the most contentious issue. Um, people who favor ecology don't necessarily have the trade-off of people who favor green space. Does that make sense? Yeah, but mostly, again, this was about how to have a meaningful conversation that can resurface these ways in ways that are safe and respectful. And that's what I think we have to be cultivating in the next two months.
is that is that we are divided across fundamental values, even while we can appreciate each other's values. And we have to privilege them and give them space so that as we make our decision, everyone feels they've been heard, their concerns are being seriously considered, and even if they lose, there are other ways that they can make they can be made to feel that your concerns are really being seriously taken into our plan. Right? That we don't none of these have to be zero sum. And that's and that's I think part of what what we have to figure out is what processes can we use so folks feel included, heard, and considered. And that if they lose, they're not losing what's so deeply important to them. But somehow it is being factored into whatever decision is being made. I think it's good that on four of your six that you wound up with folks making compromises. It's interesting that the two others looks like they're, you know, I'm curious. I'd be curious to talk to those people. People. So it sounds like there was self, there looks, I see something that looks like self selection mm -hmm. and reinforcement mm -hmm. in the top. And, you know, in the bottom, I also. Okay, like, let's, let's, yeah. let's gather up now. We're, we got to begin to wrap up. Yeah. Um, can I just make one, one comment on this? I think it's interesting, like, Dorothy, your point about, you know, how things are defined. Because I think part of what happened in this conversation, I, I was in a group where. You know, it was like the idea of affordability, so like what does that mean to me? And I think there's two pieces, like thinking about only me and my consideration. Then when I hear other people speaking, I go, oh, okay, now I understand why that might even be a consideration for someone else. Whereas if I just see the word, I have no clue why that might even be important to someone else. But then also I think when you are sitting at a table discussing it, you, you hear what different things mean to different people. They might not all mean the same thing, but you get a bigger sense of that, and then you're getting, like Jay's kind of saying, that bigger picture of what, are people, what do people care about, right? And then you have that in your mind, and you sort of know that broader picture of what's important to people, mm -hmm. and can consider those things as, as you move forward. So I think that's, that's bad. Well, um, yeah. so, so what do you think generally about this idea that, that as you move into decisions, Taking these values as sort of the underlying bedrock that you're going to have to consider is very similar. Is that, how does that land up with you? Can you repeat the question? So, so the idea that you, you're dealing with something very concrete and very tangible, money, buildings. And underneath it are a lot, no? Interesting? Education. OK, which is not student, so tangible. Student education okay. is our number one consideration. Okay. All right. So that and so so so, but and underneath all of this are deep values and deep commitments that have been framed oppositionally and don't need to be, and that I think can be included in your deliberations and and your solutions, so that nobody feels left out. Somehow, all of these things can and must be addressed. On what 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 scale? Which one is is prioritized? That's what you guys are going to have to figure out. But all of them have to be addressed. I guess I, I did want to comment something on, about the, the process and, and that looking at dots, you can see the, um, the groups that created the most, I guess I would say, growth. Um, you, you have the group that started out biased together and went more biased together. <laughs> right? I mean, that's... And, and then you have you have the group that started out very separate and then came together. So it, it, now it's, it's luck of the draw, and I, I sort of understand that. Then you don't you, you don't really know. You know, I'm sure the the deck of cards was shuffled, and sometimes you get a handful of aces. But um, I, I did think that was an interesting observation from the. And I think that Louisa. I'd like to make just a comment that I think I'm hearing you and I'm, I'm seeing this and I feel like all of us have um, come to understand these values coming out of our community as probably being the underlying values around this decision. Um, I guess I want to say what I don't feel is represented here that is resonant for me when I wear, which I am right now because we're in a public meeting, when I wear my hat as a school board member my decisions must be about the education 
of our children. And I can appreciate and I can listen to community values, but that is my role and I take that very seriously. And so to me, like having schools in one corner, if I were to do this exercise, I would have to um, really reflect on my role as a school board member, which which maybe would just put me in one camp, but I guess I'm saying I, I feel like um, that is why I'm here, and I think that's why a lot of us are here. Um, yes. I was going to be, of course, I, I feel the duty of our duty to advocate for the education of our, of our students here. I think that also it will be uh, inaccurate to think that schools are not part of affordability that to keep this village affordable, we need to have strong schools that can appeal to normal people, which I think it does already, but to businesses. And I see the cost of under-investing into the learning environment of our students is a cost on affordability as well. I don't think that it should be considered one or the other because that's short-term th short thinking. Long-term thinking is that we need to have resilient schools so that we can have Yes, sir. You made a comment about this is not a zero-sum game. Was that addressed, you know, at the meeting? I, I think it was in the sense of saying that, that whatever decision is made, if people in any of these camps are feeling excluded, it's going to be at a hard time going forward. Everyone has to feel like, like their core values. Now, maybe it's about helping folks see the long perspective. Maybe it's about saying, as you've been hearing me say, I think, and let's create a fund at the foundation for folks who think this is going to price them out of Yellow Springs. Um, one of the people, I guess it was our editor, said, one of the conclusions that I'm making from this is leave no one behind. Right? Whatever we do, we can't leave anybody behind. So if folks think that this school is going to make it unaffordable for them to stay in town, let's figure out a way that it won't do that. We have, we have eight funds at the foundation, let's have nine funds now. Right? Um, so, so, in other words, we just have to make sure that any solution you come up with addresses all of these so that people think, maybe not to their 100%, but at least to some extent, what I care about so deeply is being addressed. And that's my question was, the reason I'm asking is because I've been told, hopefully correctly, over the past 14 months that this is a community that supports education and has always supported education. So in, in my mind, and I'm not, I don't design activities like this, it's not a, it's not a square, it's a triangle. Mm -hmm. Because the given, the if, if we follow up on that mm -hmm. belief, we support schools and we support education, mm -hmm. then the given is, mm -hmm. where do I land between mm -hmm. ecology and affordability mm -hmm. and green space? Mm -hmm. Oh, with the other. given nice. being nice. I the center is the school. So that, that was the reasoning cool. for that. Yeah. Well, that's great. That. That's a great redesign. That's, yeah. That would have been better. <laughs> yeah. Could right. I just ask a definition of a zero sum game? Like, yeah. What does that mean? So that means somebody wins and somebody right. loses. Oh, okay. If, if, this, if we support schools X, then affordability is going to lose. I if we create this type of a school in this way, folks who com are committed to a college are going to lose. How do we do it so everybody feels enough of what they deeply value is being addressed? Um, I like this. There's something you just said about um, leave no one behind bothers me. Mm -hmm. And it, it bothers me because by continually kicking the can down the road, we're leaving our children behind. Mm -hmm. And I understand, you know, this, this, especially in this progressive community, we want everybody to to be able to come up with this, you know, you don't I want to leave one person behind or price them out. Um, but at some point, the people before us paid for the education of our children and put these buildings up. And, and um, it used to be a progressive value to keep that built, right? I mean, we talked about democracy with a big D. You know, one of the great leveling factors in this country was, was public education. Otherwise, only the rich had access to it. To good education, right? And um, it frustrates me to, that so much is put on the schools and the schools alone in this community. 
that, uh, affordability. Yeah, it, and some of it is, you know, we, we have big buildings, and, those, and that's a big cost. I mean, you have to go to refresh them. That's it's a big thing. So I understand why that argument comes up. But again and again, it seems to land on the schools and not other entities that that are able to go forward with their agendas. And that's frustrating to me, and it's frustrating that we are the ones then being said. You've got to make a decision so that no one's left behind. And at the end of the day, when we continually don't do anything, we just leave the kids behind. And, and they're the ones who can't vote and don't have the voices. And we're the ones who are supposed to be speaking for them. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's both and though. I don't think it's either or. Which is which is, you know, once we come up with numbers and folks really understand how much or how little that's going to be. And we say to them, um, if you're feeling that you're going to be priced out, we're going to support you. We're going to try to help that so that doesn't happen. I don't, I don't see why we have to choose. Right? We're talking about integrative solutions, where we say we need a solution where all of these things work. Now, none of them can work 100% probably. But can we find a good balance in which folks feel like these things they so deeply are committed to are going to be addressed enough so that they can say yes to whatever you guys decide to do for. Now, I hope that evolves that way, but traditionally, and, and you know, I've got the scars from the last two levy campaigns. Right. Um, that's not how it's going, unfortunately. Well, I think that's an important statement. I think that if we do it the same way we did it before, we might get the same results. Yeah. I guess I, I would like to also say, um, I've lived in this community my whole life. Took a little time away, come back. <laughs> I've been here for a very long time, and I have seen this community face a lot of challenges, and that corner right up there, affordability, I have never seen prioritized in Yellow Springs in a way that was a significant action that changed, meaningfully changed that conversation in this community during my lifetime. I'm 44. I, um, recall when the entire village voted on referendum to vote down an affordable housing development in the late 1990s when I lived here. The entire village voted it down. And just last year, our village council voted down another affordable housing uh, development. It is something I, I feel very strongly about, and I, I just, and when I see it there in that corner, I'm glad that it's there because it is an important issue in this community. And I wish that every decision that this community had to make in every public body had a square like that. And that our public officials were all held accountable to the values of this village. Because in my experience, I have not seen a meaningful action in my lifetime of living in this town that actually made a change about that particular piece. It wasn't the whole village that voted it down in 1999. Well, it, just it, was was a referendum, it was a referendum. It was, a, it was by it did go down, but it was a majority, but it was not the whole village. Um, just, I just, just want to, yeah. I just a little change? correction. There. But what does it change? Just, just that it wasn't, I don't know, I just, I right, just it wasn't clear, it wasn't like everybody was against it by any means. I'm not sure how close it was, do you remember? Um, it could have been 60-40, but I'd have to look at it. You know, one of the things that Naomi said when we were talking about this, and, and I'll talk about the meeting that they had, because the Alumni Association is gangbusters to be up there. They're talking about a very major campaign to support. Um, but one of the things that she said is when she talked about this issue, and she was going door to door. Lots of people said, well, I'm going to be able to afford this, but I'm not sure about my neighbors, and I'm concerned about my neighbors. And I think that's an important point, which is even just the, there's so much that's symbolic. Are we going to do something that's going to hurt other people in Yellow Springs? We don't want to do that. Is it actual? Is it concrete? We're confused, whatever. So, so you're making the possibility, I think, of saying we are a caring community that's going to do something for our kids in the long term, and it's not going to hurt people in the short term. Right? It's both in. It's got to be both in, I think. And that's that's the challenge. This is not a, this, you know, it is majority. It is going to be a majority. It's going to be a vote. Right? So it will win by majority. And yet, you still want to create the sense that this is the will of the community. 
that we're creating, we're building on, who we are and what we care about. Even if we're hypocritical about it, we say we commit committed to affordability, but we don't enact the policy enough, okay, let's help bridge that gap. And why is it all on your shoulders? <laughs> Shoot. Wish it weren't. No, I mean, I'm happy for it. But, you know, my, you know, I've seen my job as giving people legitimate choices. And we're still getting to that point. Yeah. We're not there yet, and it's frustrating. If, so, you're, if you're not closer to there in two weeks, then I'll be as frustrated as you are. Oh. So let's get to work on this next week. Again, it, it, it's coming. I mean, we, right. I, I, I feel like we're moving, so I don't want to yeah. characterize this like we've we've wasted five meetings where we could have talked about things. That's just simply inaccurate. It's not. I'm it, not it's what I'm saying. inaccurate. And and I think I appreciate that you're that you're willing to battle this affordability piece, but um, I think you misunderstood a little bit. The, the the theme is that our children are paying the price of our um, debate about affordability, um, and and so. We need to, you know, I appreciate TJ and, and Jay's comments that as we go through the, these discussions and as we go through making a decision, we do need to bring it back to we are an educational institution whose job is to educate the children of this community. And so while things like affordability are important and ecology is important and green space is important, we're not, it's not our responsibility to create green space for the village. It's not our responsibility to make the village affordable. It is our responsibility to protect the public investment. As we the public do what? Of what? As we do what? Educate the children of the community. We're not a bank. We don't protect public taxes just to, to have them. We do a very important um, we have a very important role in this community, and, and I do, you know, I know people here are committed to education. That's clear to see. But I think we just have to think about what is our central mission. Our strategic planning process has been going great, and hopefully that's helped us keep in the conversation what we're all about. And we are about educating children. I think I'd also like to say, rather than have deficit thinking that we are in trouble because we're in this spot where we don't have any more time, I like I, I work on this a lot in my own work professionally, uh, asset-based thinking instead of deficit thinking. So thinking actually about appreciating the amount of time, and some of you in this room spent more time on that facilities committee, um, you know, than others. I, I didn't serve on that committee, so the amount of time that we have put into, I think, a process of integrity over more than a year to arrive at where we are, I would just like to appreciate that and just take a moment to, to say that because we've done a lot of work and there's value to that. And it's true that we're running out of time, but if I start to think like that, I, I start to shut down. Like, I don't, I'm not able to even get creative thinking going because I just start to get like, <laughs> um, so I, I just offer that to the group. Yeah. I, I wanted to balance. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, Amy, I think you, you and Luis are in a very similar situation, and it's not your fault. It's it's uh, how the OB Meetings Act has to go, right? And so the people who've been most involved are Dorothy, Dorothy and, and Judith, like like Luis said. So they see more of it all the time in the activity, and then you can't go talk to them about it because of how the OB Meetings Act. And so you're at an open meeting, right? Right. And so and I just got called into this meeting yesterday, which I thought was really good in terms of. Yeah, so I got up to speed on portions of it. And I have to recognize that you guys aren't there and don't see yeah, those. I mean, and until we come back, I know. And that's, <laughs> so I, I understand the frustration. Um, you can so always, I hope you can always you see the weird stuff going questions. on. You know, yeah. And we've talked. And that's harder. So, it, it's harder to see all everything that is happening. And if you do look, right, I mean, if you make a decision in May on what goes on, there's May to November. Like the public, I think people have this urgency and they think like they're not going to get any time to decide. But there's all that time that the public's going to be able to see and debate and talk and discuss. 
we're maybe a little more pressed because we've got these options that we have to narrow down as a group with, with as much input from the community as we can gather. Um, so yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from, but at the yeah. same time know that there's, and it's a... Well, and truthfully, this is the law, right? Down, so that's where it's from. It's kind of made it, you know, so I've been reserved about talking about what I want to talk about, but I also felt like we were getting to the point where we were going to be closer to that. Now I feel like we're further away. So I feel, I, I, I have a sense of urgency about what I want to talk about. And, um, and I, I feel like, and I, I'm, I'm sad because I feel like I'm going to be told, well, that, you know, I, I want people to have an open mind because they don't want to be told it's too late to talk about this. And I feel it's important. I wanted to celebrate what we've done, or what we've achieved in the past year, because I think it's getting us closer to where I believe we want to go. Because now we have we have some yeah, more and more specific so numbers about the cost of renovations and the cost of building new in a way that we didn't in the past studies, right? So now we can actually make the difference between those four values, but before they were conflated because we're lacking information. Now we know the cost of we know the cost of full renovations, and we know uh, other costs that I'm sure that you're going to update us mm -hmm. soon as they're being refined. Yeah. But now we're we're able to actually sort out those value in a way before you know we had conflated renovations and affordability. Well now we, we can make the difference between the two. So we've made a lot of progress, even though we're uh, everyone more educated as a board, but we're still have this major challenge in front of us of how we're going to present this to the public. Right. That's right. How, you know, what's our strategy? Where is the, you know, where is the fork? You know, which part is the cart and which part is the horse? And you probably, and I, you know, have an idea where I think the horse is. Okay, so, so tomorrow the main focus is on, well, let's look at it again. Hold that, hold that. Uh, oh, it's there. Sorry. Thank you. All right. So, so what's effective group process? How do you work well together? How do you address the obstacles that we talked about tonight? When, when things, obstacles jump up at the last second, how are you going to do that? What kind of processes are you going to use? Then, how do you make decisions which are deliberative, even if it's at the end a majority vote? Right. Getting to a majority vote in ways that you hear everybody, particularly you hear the people who are, are disagreeing with the group. It's not, okay, well, so be quiet if you're disagreeing because the group is going this way. It's, let's hear what you're saying, because probably you're representing a really important voice that we have to <coughs> include in the table. Hold on, Amy, don't leave. No, Please. no, I'm not leaving. I'm just blessing. You have to understand, I just sat a long time all day. Okay. I have a knee that's... We are wrapping up. Okay, go ahead. I can hear you. Okay, so... so so how do we, how do you do deliberative processes even while you're moving into majority votes? Deli deliberative processes that will include everybody's concerns, at least in exploration. Right? So, so, yeah. and then, and then, now this is very much what you're talking about, Amy. Mm -hmm. How do we spend our last hour and a half saying, what are we going to do from now until the end? How are we going to be able to have this meeting that we decide this, that raises this issue so we can make a decision about it. How are we going to get the village and the community to feel like they're truly included in this, that mm -hmm. they're informed with facts that they can believe, all of those things. We're going to try to create an agenda for that. We're not going to do any of it. But we're going to set an agenda so all of you, I hope, and us, leave tomorrow saying, we know what we're doing for the next eight weeks. And we have some plans for when our plans get messed up. We have some ideas for how we're going to address the emergencies and how we're going to qualify what makes an emergency. Right? Now, that's, that's the ambition for four hours tomorrow. It's a pretty big ambition. Um, but we have a, we have a good design. And, and you guys have all morning to relax. Obviously, you're not doing anything else but relaxing tomorrow morning. Oh, no, actually, I'm going to make me promise. But, but, <laughs> but we will see you at 1. And let's, let's, uh, let's do an exit. Activity. So this is this comes from the world of appreciative inquiry, which just talks about things that maybe I think we have a resident star in appreciative inquiry. Maybe so. What's what's working for us? What what's 
something that I feel like I've gained that I didn't have before I came. And so, so you say it. You say, I've gained, um, and this is true. I already knew it, but I know it even more, that the amount of commitment and time and energy I'll put in, into this is just phenomenal. It's really phenomenal. So anybody who also agrees with my appreciation, step in and, and join me in my appreciation. What did you appreciate? I appreciate the amount of time and energy and passion that you are all putting into this. It is extraordinary. So if you have an appreciation you want to share or something that you got from tonight, you step in the middle, you say it, and then we join you if you feel that appreciation too. I appreciate that we all care about this community and the schools in them. I appreciate that Terry brought dinner, so it was pretty good, and we all sat down anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. hey, I, I appreciate how much the, um, oh yeah, <laughs> uh, I appreciate how much this uh, community cares. Um, I guess I, I would say I've, I've been in multiple school districts, and the participation at our regular meetings is, is astounding. So mm -hmm. it's something that I really appreciate here, and like groups like this tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that we, you know, all took what was at times a very emotional journey together, and we were willing to work through the discomfort. It's been an opportunity to hear what people are, are at at the moment. the way that everybody shared and wanted everybody else's stories and just kind of had questions and curiosities about them. feeling um, some level of um, support beyond the people in this room and with people in this room in an acknowledgement about um, how much this means and the weight of it and the importance of it and feeling there are times where I have felt um, kind of lonely in that and I feel like right now I'm trying to feel into what it feels to like share that on not just our shoulders, but like all of the people who showed up for World Cafe and people who are showing up who I think do want this to be a successful person. So I, I feel that. I appreciate it. It's simple, but I appreciate it that. <laughs> okay, we'll end early. Thank you for coming. Well, right to me. I had a closing exercise no. as well. <laughs> okay, we got 15 minutes. You that. may not, you may not. I will we'll take a motion that we adjourn. No, 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 that's that, that is my closing act. Oh, <laughs> I said, <Okay>. <laughs> see you all tomorrow.